in 2012, I would argue that the country is even more polarized than we were in 2008. Uh, in 2008, following the Bush administration, um, the country seemed to be to be very left versus right, and the middle seemed to be dissipating. In 2012, I think that it's even further uh, on the edges. Studies repeatedly have shown that negative advertising is effective at moving voters. Voters also repeatedly will report that they hate negative advertising and they want more policy-focused ads. So here you have a conundrum. You have an ad tactic that really works uh, and a public that doesn't like the ad that really works. Uh, and I think the candidates are just going to continually go back to the breadbasket and use negative ads. I also think that the uh, I also think that the 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 decision, uh, the Supreme Court decision that now allows super PACs to get involved is going to increase the amount of negative advertising because super PACs will do that and they can do it anonymously for a period of time before their donor list has to be reported. Campaigns are built, covered, and promoted by media organizations and the candidates themselves as competitions. Not as competitions of ideas, but competitions of people where you win, you lose, you have a record. It's gotten so bad that moderates like Olympia Snow are announcing that they're no longer going to run for Congress because nothing can get done because it's polarized, because they can't have civil discussions. It's all about winning and losing and not about what's good for the country. The cure to this, I firmly believe, begins and ends in the classroom. If you teach them to respect other, to respectfully disagree, how to be able to do that, how to argue for their positions in a respectful manner and listen to the other side and engage in a dialogue. If you can do this, then you'll create a culture that respects that type of practice over the idea that it's about winning and losing. Religion and politics are inextricably linked in the American public and in American uh, society. It's never a good strategy to attack a person's religious faith in a campaign the public gets turned off because they don't want people attacking their religious faith. It's, 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 an, it's, a, um, it's a closely held version of privacy and uh, personal freedom and rights in terms of religious faith. On the left with President Obama, you're going you're gonna to see an emphasis on fairness and equality. Now, fairness actually presents, I think, a problem for the president in using that word because Fair is a matter is a relative matter. It's a very ill-defined word uh, that everybody likes, except when fair doesn't mean fair to them. I think on the right, uh, some of the buzzwords you're going to hear are going to be related to the economy, uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, fiscal restraint. I think that debates do matter. They can get tedious. But they do matter because they present an opportunity for candidates to illustrate their own personality, illustrate policy differences between they and their competitors. But also, debates serve as a vehicle, too, to look at how the media want to and try to frame an election.